If you are not using a retinol in 2024, I'm going to need you to start ASAP. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Dr. Nicole. I'm a cosmetic doctor that specializes in skincare. Today, I want to dive into one of my favorite ingredients in all of skincare, and that is retinol. If you've never used retinol before, or you've used it for a while, and you just want some tips of how to get the best out of your retinol, this video is for you. you're not using a retinol in 2024 then I don't know what you're doing. It is an essential part of anyone's skincare routine. Retinol is one of the most evidence-based skincare ingredients that we have. There are so many benefits of retinol. It can help with fine lines and wrinkles, it can help with hyperpigmentation, it can help with texture and my favorite thing is it can help treat acne. When picking a retinol, it can get very confusing because you have retinols, retinaldehyde, things like tretinoin, but I'm here to demystify everything and break it down so it's very simple and you can pick the right retinol for you. Retinol is a derivative of vitamin A, which is known for its ability to increase cell turnover. So in simple terms, it just speeds everything up, shedding out the old skin and revealing fresh new bright skin underneath. When retinol is absorbed into your skin, it is converted into retinol acid. This is the active form that actually works on your skin and has all those amazing benefits. Different types of retinol that you hear about, retinaldehyde, retinol, tretinoin, those represent how many conversions it takes for the ingredient to be converted into retinoic acid, but more on that later. Retinol is one of the few skincare ingredients that has evidence behind it when it comes to reducing fine lines and wrinkles. It also helps promote collagen production to improve the elasticity and firmness of your skin. By increasing cell turnover, retinol can actually help to fade your hyperpigmentation and brighten your skin. One of my favorite ingredients to help people achieve an even complexion. Retinol is one of the ultimate anti-acne ingredients can be a game changer, especially with those who are suffering with cystic acne. But retinol can be a little bit tricky to use. Though it sounds amazing and has loads of benefits, it also comes with a few side effects that you need to be aware of. So I'm gonna teach you exactly how you can get the best out of your retinol and have all those amazing benefits while minimizing the side effects. To figure out which retinol is right for you, we first need to talk about the different types of retinols that you can buy and that you have access to. The strongest form of retinol that we have is something called Accutane. Now this is an oral medication that you can get prescribed by a dermatologist and it's usually reserved for those with very severe acne. As this is a prescription oral medication, we won't be getting too far into that in this video. The next hierarchy of retinols is tretinoin. Now this is also a prescription medication, however, you don't have to ingest it. It's actually a cream that you put on your skin. Tretinoin is already in the active form of retinoic acid, therefore it doesn't need any conversions to get into its active form but this means it comes with a lot more irritation. So a lot of caution needs to be used in sensitive skin or those who have never really tried any sort of form of retinol before. The next form of retinol in the hierarchy is a dapolene gel, which often is referred to as different gel. This is a new form of retinol that has been produced recently and it actually does not need to be converted into retinoic acid to become active, which means that it's way less irritating than the traditional tretinoin, but it's still a very effective anti-acne medication. If you live in the UK, you will have to get this on prescription. However, if you live in the US, you can just get this over the counter at places like CVS. Next on the hierarchy is retinaldehyde. Retinaldehyde means one step to be converted into retinoic acid. Therefore, it's not gonna be as irritating as something like tretinoin, but that means it will be less potent than tretinoin. So less side effects, but not as strong and not as potent. You can also get retinaldehydes over the counter. I'm gonna share a few of my favorite with you in just a minute. Next on the ladder is retinol. So this is the one we keep hearing about and it's actually one of the weaker forms of retinol that we have available to us. Retinol needs two conversions to become retinoic acid. This means it comes with a lot less side effects and irritation, but it's way less potent than something like tretinoin. This is why it's a great place to start if you're a beginner easily get these over the counter at lots of different pharmacies such as Boots in the UK or CVS in the US. So there are so many different retinols on the market that you can choose from so how do you know which one is right for you and which one you should be trying? I'm going to provide you with a list of my absolute favorite retinols from if you're a beginner to if you're a seasoned professional and if you want it for anti-acne or if you want it for just simple fine lines, wrinkles and texture. So let's start out with you beginners. 
Let's say you've never ever used any form of retinol before. If you have very sensitive skin and you know that you react to products a lot, I would recommend the Kiehl's Microdose Retinol. The reason why I love to recommend this to beginners is the way it's formulated means that it will slowly introduce the retinol throughout the day until you reapply it. it really lessens the amount of irritation that you are going to experience. Another great beginner friendly option is the Paula's Choice 0.3% retinol. It also has an ingredient called Bacuchiol in it which is really good for helping to dampen down any inflammation and irritation that you might experience when you start the retinol. These ones are great for beginners but you may not see massive anti-acne benefits with them. So if you are really wanting to see anti-acne benefits and you tolerate those well, I would recommend at your next bottle when you finish with that going for another higher strength until you really start to see your acne come under control. Next, if you are a beginner to retinol, but you don't necessarily get that much inflammation and your skin is not that irritable a lot of the time, then I would really recommend starting with the CeraVe Resurfacing Serum. It has a very moderate percentage of retinol and you are really going to start to see some of those amazing benefits of reducing fine lines and wrinkles and even some anti-acne benefits as well. The reason why I love this product is it's great at helping with texture. So if you are a girly who struggles with clogged prone skin, this may well be the product for you. Also love Olay's Regenerist Retinol 24. It's a really nice moisturizer feel. So it feels very nice on the skin and it can be quite hydrating, although it is a retinol. That's a really good option for those who would like to see the benefits of fine lines and wrinkles and not necessarily the acne benefits. Let's talk about the more advanced retinols. If you have used some of those lower percentage retinols and you wanna start seeing more anti-acne benefits, or really struggling with acne and you wanna see benefits right away, I'd recommend trying a retinaldehyde because that is gonna give you less irritation but also really help with those anti-acne problems. My all-time favorite retinaldehyde is the Medicaid Retinal Crystal range. They have a varying of percentages in this range and you can start with the lowest and make your way up, depending on how you tolerate it. I think of retinaldehyde as the perfect middle ground option. If you really wanna start seeing the strong benefits of retinal, but you don't wanna deal with the irritation or trying to get a prescription, then retinaldehyde is gonna be the thing for you. For a more affordable option, The Ordinary have come out with their own retinal, which is also amazing. It only comes in 0.2%, so you can also give that one a go. So now you've figured out which retinol is gonna be for you. You need to know the signs and symptoms to look out for if you are getting signs of irritation or that you're just not getting along with the product. I've mentioned before, retinols are amazing, but they do come with side effects. The things to look out for are general irritation of your skin. This is going to be in the form of flaking, redness, and maybe even more breakout. Tip that I give to a lot of people to try and avoid irritation is to don't put the retinol in areas that are most sensitive, which tend to be in the nose here and around the mouth. Try and avoid those areas, or you can put a little bit of Aquaphor or Vaseline in those areas before you apply your retinol. The next thing you need to be aware of that you may experience is something called the retinol purge. You see an increase in acne from when you start to use the product. Do not be alarmed. Because retinol increases the cell turnover of your skin, all of those pimples and bumps that were beneath the surface are just being pushed out quicker. So it looks like your skin is getting worse, but it's actually just doing its thing. However, if the retinol purge lasts for a really long time beyond the three month mark, I would really recommend going and seeing a dermatologist and seeking professional help. So now you know which retinol to choose and you know the signs and symptoms to look out for. How are you even gonna start using it? So here is exactly how you're gonna start using the retinol. First of all, you're only going to use it in the evening. Only going to use it maximum, maximum two to three nights a week. And you're just gonna see how you get along with the product and with the ingredients. It's really important that you start slow just to make sure that your skin doesn't get too irritated and too overwhelmed. Try to avoid other harsh ingredients on the days that you are using your retinol. For example, things like BHAs and AHAs may cause more irritation to your skin when they are combined with the retinol. So just skip those ingredients on the days that you are using retinol. Always remember to apply your retinol to dry skin. This is because when your skin is wet, it increases the absorption of the retinol. And this can lead to a lot more irritation, which you do not want. A perfect tip you can use if you are struggling with irritation is to use the sandwich method. The sandwich method involves putting on a layer of moisturizer, allowing that to dry down, 
putting on the retinol and then putting on another layer of moisturizer after. This can really help dampen down the irritation. The next morning, be sure to wear your sunscreen. This is a non-negotiable if you're using retinol. Retinol can make your skin more sensitive to light and therefore the sun's rays. So please, please, make sure you're wearing your sunscreen every single day. If you follow these steps and you are consistent with using a retinol, I promise you, your skin is going to be transformed into something like you've never even seen. Remember, consistency is key. And if you are experiencing irritation, just reduce the amount of times a week that you're using your retinol or even go down to a lower percentage. Make sure you're listening to your skin and understanding what it can and cannot handle. And that is everything for today's video. I hope you learned something and I can't wait to hear all about you guys' retinal journey. If you have any questions, I'm so happy to answer them in the comment section. Or you can let me know what you wanna see for the next video. What do you wanna learn about? What skincare problem are you struggling with? We will get through it together. If you enjoyed these kind of tips about skincare, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you get notified every time I upload another video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.